Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Lawrence Church on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Um, Peter, I'm just using the tabletop at the moment. Is that all right? Yep. Now, we have had another ceiling fall this week, which isn't what we wanted. So we now have both the aisles unavailable for use. So when we come forward for communion, you'll be coming down and back the center aisle and we'll continue to receive communion with the bread intincted in the wine here. But we're very happy to bring it to those who either, you know, for mobility reasons or because they won't, don't want to get too close to people, we'll bring it to you in your pews and in the chancel. Now, the PCC took the decision this week that um, whilst you are very welcome to continue to wear face coverings in church, um, now is the time to be more relaxed about that. We will wear them when we administer Holy Communion, but we don't expect you to unless you want to. And actually, I've discovered that's what happened in the cathedral yesterday. So we're, we're following good advice there. So now you might look at the first hymn, which is 198 and think I've never sung that. Yeah, but you will know the tune. So let's stand to sing. We're going to sing just the first two verses and the last of from the very depths of darkness springs a bright and living light. So appropriate. Now we have the nave well lit. So let's stand to sing hymn number 198, verses 1, 2, and the last. Turning now to page two in our Easter booklet. We say together, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect, let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and Jill is reading our first reading. In Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in the room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the, re with the request, Please come without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made for them while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside. Then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is, will be familiar to those who used to come to the family service and we changed one of the words. It refers to brotherly love but we've always sung family love here at St. Lawrence. It's number 386. We're going to sing it through twice. 
386, let there be love shared among us. be with you and also with you alleluia alleluia i am the first and the last says the lord and the living one i was dead and behold i am alive for evermore alleluia 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 hear the gospel of our lord jesus christ according to john Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. And they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in, because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Bake Off or Sewing Bee? <laughs> Where would we be without food and clothing? In today's Gospel, the risen Jesus, as well as enabling the disciples to catch a bountiful haul of fish, is already cooking breakfast for them. With some he caught earlier? He is still very much a down-to-earth saviour who cares for the disciples' bodily needs. We read part of this passage at the PCC meeting on Thursday and noticed, amongst other things, that Peter, having been naked, put on clothes before he jumped into the lake to swim to Jesus. Maybe just enough to cover his modesty, because normally you take off clothes before you jump into water. But it is in our first reading that we encounter the ministry of making clothes in its fullness. How many of you are familiar with the story of the death and resurrection of Tabitha, also known as Dorcas? How many of you know that she is honoured in this church with a window in her memory? Who can point to it? <laughs> it's over there in the north aisle. You can still view it from a distance. It isn't always to interpret, it isn't always easy to interpret windows, especially when they are worn with age as this one is and the expressions on some of the faces are missing. But for me, Dorcas is the woman in orange wearing a halo. It's rare to see biblical women other than Mary wearing a halo. But did you notice that in the opening sentence of our Bible reading, Dorcas is described as, well, listen again, in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She is described as a disciple, the only woman, as far as we know, to be described as such in the Bible. This is some accolade for Tabitha, Dorcas, as is her being in one of our windows. The window, like most of our windows, was made by Hardmans of Birmingham in 1878. They were arguably the leading stained glass manufacturer of the time, being commissioned by the architect Pugin to make windows for the Houses of Parliament, as well as for our Roman Catholic Cathedral of St. Chad. Digging around in the church records, I discovered the inscription to go with it. Disciple at Joppa, named Tabitha or Dorcas, raised by Peter. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds. That's a great tribute. Would you like that written on your headstone? And of course, she was a needlewoman of some repute, for when Peter arrived at her home, where she was laid upstairs, having died, he was surrounded by weeping widows, bearing the clothes that Tabitha had made for them. Weeping widows. To be a widow in those days often meant having been left in a financial predicament, no pension, or even universal credit. Dorcas, making clothes for them, would save some of their honour, even their modesty, and that of their children. For Dorcas is shown holding up a garment 
towards what I presume to be a young mother with a toddler. The toddler seemingly wearing as little as Peter did in the boat while fishing. There's also a woman in red holding the shoulders of her garment and I can hear her saying, look, this is what Tabitha Dorcas made for me. Isn't it gorgeous? So let's hear it for the needle workers, whether we're sewing needles or knitting needles or crochet hooks or weaving needles in looms, down through the centuries who have made clothes for others and vestments for the church. And let's hear it for the launderers too. All giving generously of their time and often using their own cloth or wool or soap powder. Of such is the kingdom of God. And let's hear it too for those who are working today. Many working in sweatshops far and near to provide the world with cheap fashion. May thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven with fairer wages and conditions. And you today, you can more easily check out the ethical credentials of companies you buy from, because many have modern slavery statements on their websites. But let's spend a moment or two thinking about the garment Dorcas is holding out to put on the child. I have to say, it looks rather big for the child. But how many of us were told as children, oh, it's fine, you'll grow into it. One summer holiday, I worked in a school outfitters. It was a phrase we often used, especially when we were out of stock of the size lower and term began next week. Now, not quite changing the subject, Thursday gone, I attended a morning for clergy in parishes with church schools. Lots to think about there. And especially that school worship congregations are far, far larger than many church ones. But why I'm telling you this is because we heard this wonderful quote from a lady called Dorothy Coddington. She says, I prefer to cut children's spiritual garments a little too large for them to grow into as they will in time. And who knows what vivid image or hint of the beauty of God will remain in their mind and memory. Now what is amazing is that Dorothy didn't write those words five years ago, or even five weeks ago. She wrote them back in 1923, nearly a hundred years ago. I prefer to cut children's spiritual garments a little too large for them to grow into as they will in time. And who knows what vivid image or hint of the beauty of God will remain in their mind and memory. Appropriate words as this week we have school Eucharist for years three and four. But I wonder what or who helped your spiritual growth as a child? What can you remember of those hymns from assemblies? One of my favorites was May time, play time. What or who helps your spiritual growth as an adult? And what vivid image or hint of the beauty of God has remained in your mind and memory, whether from childhood or yesterday? That's something to ponder this week, perhaps as you knit or sew, or potter in the garment, or make a meal, or do the washing up. So where would we be without food and clothing? And God knows we need both. And we can encounter him in the provision of them. I'm sure disciple Dorcas did.
did. Reverend Teresa, could you take over now, please? Because I'm partway through the sewing bee and I really want to see the last bit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Can I invite you to stand, if you feel able, as we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. In hope and joy, let us pray to the Father. And Jacob's leading our prayers today. Let's bow our heads and pray. In the first instance, let's think of the people of Ukraine. They live in Russia. Let's imagine family breaks, mother not to see children, husbands and wives, no property, nothing to claim, even in banks, in stores, all is gone because of these Russian attacks. We put the people of Ukraine before you, O oh Lord. May your power be felt. Our God is powerful. His powers are beyond this. That, remember that day Thomas was not there when Jesus showed himself to his disciples. But he, he knew everything. Doors locked, even with alien keys, he walks through. He help us understand that your powers are far beyond or above human thinking. In planets, you are there. In planes, jets, you are there. Under the seas, oceans, in mountains, in the universe, your powers are there. In each person, even in the blood, even in the air we breathe, you are there. In each one's minds, even future plans, you are clearly aware. Help us this day, dear Lord, to call upon you and realize that you have the powers. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in elections in Northern Ireland and even in England. May God's people select good leaders who appreciate and lead your people in harmony and in truth. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for popes, bishops, priests, and all those upon you 
that we call upon you, even our own priests here and in England as a whole, that may you give them what they need and what we need. Lord, in your mercy, yes. we pray for the sick, it be in hospitals, in homes, here. We pray for our minds. We pray for everyone to see your presence, Lord. Help us realize the importance of maintaining that relationship when Tabitha was raised. She had maintained that relationship such that when she was called to wake up, she did because of the relationship with God. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. be with the, those who are dead and those who have believed. Let them understand that this body of ours is just an overall. The spirit that is in us will one day for each one of us go to you, dear Lord. As our Lord Jesus taught us, so we prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, thy power and thy glory, glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. With a smile or a wave, let's offer one another a sign of peace, including those on Zoom. And let's see who's on Zoom. Actually, this is a moment where we invite you to sanitize your hands. Um, and we're going to be standing in a moment to sing a hymn. We're getting back into what was normal with new new situation. So let's see who's on Zoom. And some of you who have been on Zoom in the past are back in church, which is lovely. Janice is on Zoom and she's not feeling very well this morning. So we give Janice a big wave. And Judith and Yebu and Linda and Roger and Pauline. I think that's every, oh, and Janet and Rita. So there we go, a good few on Zoom as well. So I need to think about this, what I'm going to do. I'm going to announce a hymn and then I'll put on my mask and sanitize before I set up the altar. So our offertory hymn, now we're not taking the collection at the moment in the service, but there is an offertory plate at the back. It's number 53, at the Lamb's High Feast we sing, hymn number 53.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us a table of life and give us a cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give thanks and praise it is indeed right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks almighty and eternal father and in these days of easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works for by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, Lord by, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of Lawrence and all the saints, 
may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Merciful Lord, your, your love, love compels, compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean and our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. So, would, would you like all to sit, please? So, starting with the back, we'll be coming up and receiving communion here and then returning to our seats down the aisle. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink whether physically or spiritually in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So together we receive communion, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. So let us pray, turning to page 15. <clears throat> Almighty God, 
we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand now to sing the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. So I hope you've appreciated being able to see a bit better as the lighting improves the situation every day. It's particularly better for the person reading from the lectern. So that's really good. We're having a drone go over the church tomorrow to inspect the roof and hopefully that might give some insight into if there are any roof problems over the areas where the ceiling has fallen down. I rather hope there are because they'll be easier to fix. But there we go. Mother's Union meeting in tomorrow afternoon in the Pastoral Centre. Rowena is talking about modern slavery. Um, so everybody's welcome to that at two o'clock. Um, Ascension Day, which is Thursday the 26th of May, we're going to have a service in here at 11 o'clock and then we're hoping to have a buffet lunch with chips, with chips, over in the Great Stone. So if you're interested in that, the price is going to be around £8. Um, sign up in the porch, I've put 20 places, but you can add more names as needed. So that should be a lovely occasion. Um, pom, pom, pom. Oh, we've also got um, the day before that, the Rogation Tide service at Maysfield Community Garden. And if you haven't been, just come along. That's at 11.30 and we have a super little service and they always provide very good refreshments, don't they, Barbara? Super <laughs> dupers. And Christian Aid Week is the 15th to the 21st of um, May. I'm hoping to get another pack out to electoral roll members this week or have it in church for Sunday and to go out to all those um, um, who aren't there next Sunday. And um, in it will be a Christian Aid envelope. And then we're going to have a plant sale in June for Christian Aid. 
And we've also got a Jubilee Tea Party on Saturday the 28th of May and the Social and Fundraising Committee is meeting briefly on Zoom this week to plan further details of that. So lots going on and a fortnight today we've got our annual parochial church meeting which we're going to hold within the service. So the service will last a little bit longer but probably not more than an hour and a quarter. Depends how many difficult questions you ask at the APCM. But the electoral roll, all the names of people and just the names are on the notice board. And we have got accounts which have been inspected, approved by the PCC, signed by trust, two trustees, and we're just waiting for the inspector to come back from holiday to do the final sign off. So they are up in the porch a fortnight before the meeting. Amazing, amazing. Big thanks to Elaine for all the work she does on that. Anything I've missed? Great, well let's stand for the blessing please. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in, in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And our final hymn is number 305, Lord of the Dance. 305. <laughs>
are raised to new life in Christ. Go in his peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.